Hey guys, uh, we're going to finish up protein synthesis with translation today. Um, we've already talked about transcription and how it led to translation and how it's the starter. When we look back at the central dogma of biology, it goes DNA to RNA to a protein. And moving from DNA to RNA is transcription. And now we're going to complete the process of protein synthesis and move from mRNA to a protein. Um, now, uh, this is going to go through slides 39 through 54. Uh, you should be able to answer, really, these questions right here are pretty straightforward. Um, where does translation occur? What occurs during translation? How do I use a codon chart? And what type of bond forms between amino acids? Uh, should be able to answer those questions, no problem. You can take notes as you go through this. Uh, this is going to be a simplified version of what you have on your notes. I will say the notes have a great picture going through the different steps of um, translation. Now, let's go ahead and move on then. So we've got translation, um, again, making the protein from an mRNA transcript. So it's that basic part of central dogma. We've got DNA. We know that it carries that heredity. That goes to really mRNA. And then from there, we can't just have mRNA. We need proteins. Okay. So it's this step right there. Remember, this step is transcription, and then we also have a step here that's replication, okay? So now, with translation, we're going to take that mRNA and we're going to turn it to a protein. We do have three basic steps. These are going to look very familiar. Um, you should have seen these when we talked about replication. They have, very, they have the same names, okay? Initiation, elongation, and termination. Now, what you need to look for when we start initiation, this is when the mRNA transcripts is taken in by the ribosome. Okay, so this is when we take that mRNA transcript into the ribosome. That is initiation. Okay, all mRNAs are going to start with the same starting codon. That is going to be a U G. That ribosome will recognize this start codon and it will take it in. Okay, that's how we start. That's initiation. Now that moves us into step two. This is when we build our polypeptides. So we continue to build a protein. Okay, so this is when we start to build that protein. So we start with AUG, and then we follow that mRNA transcript down. Okay, so we've got our mRNA transcript. We see that it's going to start with AUG. That's our start codon. We're going to be taken into that protein. Remember, we've got a big unit, small unit. This is made of rRNA. And it's what's going to be responsible for reading the mRNA. So we capture with AUG, and then we continue to bring in other amino acids that have to do with the chain. So the next codon could be UUU. -U -U. Um, I can tell you right now that's going to be the amino acid phenylalanine. Um, and then what's going to happen is we're going to have tRNAs that are going to bring these amino acids here, okay? And they're gonna follow those codons. So this amino acid will enter, enter the ribosome in one of two sites. Okay, so there's the two sites. Enters in, we start moving, making that chain. Now, after each time we build this, we will have more and more and more and that chain is going to continue to grow so we keep moving down and so we've got the mRNA over here that's used and we keep going until we finish okay so we've got our two sites 
There they are. We've got our tRNAs here. The anticodon will interact with the codon. And we will have a chain building here that's made of amino acids and the bonds that hold them together. Okay. Now, that first amino acid will always be MET. Now, that is methionine. It goes with that first codon, the starting codon, which again was AUG. Okay. Now, this will continue. This process is called elongation. We will follow that mRNA transcript all the way down. What happens is we build that bond, and that bond is called a peptide bond. Once the peptide bond is formed, that amino acid is added to the chain, and the tRNA leaves. Now, instead of having the little lollipop head, it will not have that amino acid anymore. It leaves, and it goes and finds the amino acid that corresponds with its anticodon. And it goes and picks it up, and then does the process all over again. Now, that process is called elongation. We continue to move down the mRNA transcript. Now, the last process is termination. Okay, the last process is termination. And as you would assume, this is the ending. Oh my God, ending, okay? Now, what happens here is we end up hitting one of three stop codons. Now, in just a minute, I'm going to talk through the codon chart, and I'll show you the three different stop codons. So what happens is we will continue to build that protein until we hit a stop codon on that mRNA. Now, there are three. Here is one right here, UGA. That is a stop codon. So once the ribosome recognizes this codon, right, so it sees it, it stops translating. So this is when we cut off and it releases that polypeptide chain out from the ribosome. Now, that polypeptide chain is completed. Well, it is partially completed. Okay, now, um, what happens is it goes and it goes to where it needs to go. So that protein might be used by the endoplasmic reticulum. That might be a protein used to build more ribosomes. It could be a protein used as an enzyme. Um, and it will be, it'll go and get folded to what it needs to be. Okay, so this is the primary structure of a protein. That is just a line of amino acids. Line of amino acids. I'm going to write AA in them so you know that they're amino acids. Okay, just an A. Now, that's the primary structure. That's the end of translation. So translation wraps up the whole central dogma. We had DNA, we turned it to mRNA, and then we translated it into a protein. So we turned it into an entirely new um, organic molecule. So that's it. Wrapped it all up. Nice little bow. Now we need to go over how to read a codon chart. Um, you are going to practice this um, with little catchphrases uh, today, but it will help you because we will do a big project where you have to do a lot of transcription and translation. So I hope you can get a grasp of this. I'm going to post another video that goes over it. Um, the two types of codon charts that you will see, we have the circular codon chart, which is the one I personally prefer. Um, I like being able to see the entire um, amino acid. Now there are some square codon charts that also have the full name written out, but this one does not. Okay. So these are codon charts, which means you always have to use your mRNA code. Do not use your tRNA code. That would be an anti-codon chart. That's just vocab that you have to remember. Now, when we look at this, we need to, with the circular, we start from the inside and we work out. So remember I told you the start codon was AUG. Now, A, 
Work out, U. Work out one more time, G. Methionine. That is our first and starting codon. That is a, an amino acid, methionine. Okay, that codon gives rise to this. Now, what you will notice is that there are only 20 amino acids, but there's about, there is 64 code codons that are possible. So what that means is that some of these amino acids have several different codons that go along with them. Um, this is fantastic because it lowers our chance of a mutation or a messed up um, protein because it doesn't allow, it allows for there to be variation in the DNA, but it will not be harmful because there's several codes per particular amino acid. If you get the same amino acid with a different code, it's still the same protein. But if you change the amino acid in that chain, you will change the protein, which could be beneficial or it could be harmful. And that leads to a mutation. Okay. So this is the circle chart. You start in and work out. Now I'm going to go ahead and highlight three stop codons. We've got UGA, which I pointed out before. Use the marker UGA, stop codon. Okay. That's my favorite. That's the one I use most of the time. You also have UAA as well as UAG. Those are your three stop codons. So remember you have three stops and one start. Okay. Now let's look at the square charts. Um, it tells you how to work it. First base and codon, second base and codon, third base and codon. So let's say we have the codon CCC, or let's do CUG, okay? C, so we go this in this row. U, we're in this box, and then G. That's going to be leucine, okay? That is leucine. Now, same thing. We know that U, G, A is a stop codon. We also know that U, A, A. UAG. Those are all stop codons. Okay. Now, again, stop does not is not a an amino acid. It literally means stop coding. Okay. Um, so I've got three down here to practice. Uh, the first one, U U U. So I'll use the circle one, U U U. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite amino acids, U U U. That is phenylalanine. P H E over here, U U U, right? Phenylalanine. Um, there's actually a disorder called PKU that is a deficiency in the body for breaking down phenylalanine. So if you're diagnosed with PKU, which they test for early, um, you cannot have uh, too many proteins that are high in phenylalanine, as weird as that is. Okay. Second one was UGA. Feel like everybody should know that. U G A. Stop codon. U G A. Stop codon again. Okay. Now let's move on to the last one. C C C. C C C. Proline. C C C. Proline. Um, that's basically how to use that. Um, if you have any questions, email me, um, let me know, and uh, if you need to, we can set up a Google Meet and iron this out. Um, but I hope you figured out, I hope this helps, and I hope you have a fantastic day.